from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 1st, 2018. Violent riots resumed today at the Gaza security fence, though the number of Palestinians taking part was significantly lower than in recent weeks. On Tuesday, violence against Israel spiked with Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad firing some 100 rockets and mortars at Israel, which was met with a strong Israeli response of dozens of terror positions hit by the Israeli Air Force in Gaza. Wednesday and Thursday were relatively quiet, but today Hamas tried to reignite the violence. The terror group used loudspeakers from mosques in Gaza to rally the public and arranged for buses to take Gaza residents to and from the fence. However, only about 3,000 Gazans took part in the riots today, burning tires and throwing rocks at Israeli troops. An IDF vehicle was also fired upon during the riots, and a Palestinian who breached the border fence in northern Gaza planted a grenade that exploded. No Israeli soldiers were injured. Palestinian media reported that a number of Palestinian rioters were injured in the clashes. IDF troops said they are responding with riot dispersal means and are operating in accordance with the rules of engagement. Some 122,000 Palestinians from the West Bank traveled to Jerusalem today for Ramadan prayers, the largest number yet this year, according to the IDF. Today is the third Friday in the Holy Muslim Month. The prayers were conducted without incident. The Army said IDF troops are deployed in reinforced numbers and are operating along with the Shin Bet, Civil Administration, Border Police and Israel Police in order to allow the Ramadan prayers as well as defending communities and roads and preserving order and security in the region. The United States said it would veto a draft resolution from Kuwait to the U.N. Security Council and has asked for changes to be made to it. The draft demands a halt to, quote, the use of any excessive, disproportionate and indiscriminate force by the IDF and calls for the protection of the Palestinian people. It also, though, does state that it deplores the firing of rockets from the Gaza Strip at Israeli civilian areas. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley called the Arab-backed resolution a grossly one-sided approach that is morally bankrupt and would only serve to undermine ongoing efforts toward peace between the Israelis and Palestinians. Haley noted that there is no mention of Hamas in the resolution when she said Hamas is chiefly responsible for the recent violence. Kuwait had blocked a resolution from the United States this week, if you recall, condemning Hamas for the rocket attacks against Israel. A revised draft of the Kuwaiti resolution is expected to be voted on soon. Science ministers from around the world converged on Jerusalem this week for the Thinking Out of the Box Conference. The Science and Innovation Conference welcomed delegations from over 20 countries headed by ministers and deputy ministers of science. Israel's Science and Technology Minister Ophira Kunis said the gathering was to salute science and innovation from across the globe alongside Israeli technological advances. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also took part in the opening gala of the conference on Wednesday, welcoming international officials including Poland's Minister of Science, who also serves as the deputy prime minister of the country, Yaroslav Gavin. While in Israel this week, Gavin also visited Yad Vashem, Israel's memorial to the Holocaust, where he paid tribute to the six million Jews murdered, half of whom were born in Poland. While a young Israeli girl with dreams of serving in the IDF who cannot because of serious health issues, was given the chance last week to come pretty close to seeing her dream come true. 17-year-old Lolly wished to be a combat soldier in the IDF, and with the help of the Make-A-Wish Foundation Israel, Lolly took part in a one-of-a-kind experience with an elite female IDF unit who created a custom-made program just for her and her abilities, which concluded with Lolly receiving the unit's traditional beret. Make-A-Wish Israel was founded in 1996 by Denise and Avi bar Aharon and has since granted 3,500 transformational wishes.
And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 1st, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.